verse is saying. And you're missing an opportunity and letting it go by. Let me tell you something. I, I bet you I'm not the only one that has experienced this. How many of you ever experienced knowing that you need to minister to somebody, you ran out of time? Either that person is no longer here. And you're saying, man, I missed an opportunity. And you feel the guilt. And it hurts you too. I've been there still even today. Lord, do you really want me to go over there? Is this really you? We question. And then when the person is no longer here or is gone, man, we feel messed up and defeated. Yeah. Come on. So I, I, I don't know why this came up. He knows that he's speaking to you. He is telling you to go. He is telling you, come on, and demonstrate who I am. All you got to do is show up. And he'll do the rest. Many times I have I have testified this many times. You know, I had an uncle. Wasn't saved. Was a medicine man. They told me, you know, I had family calling and saying, you know, you're the one that's closest to me and trying to get there before anybody. You know, he's my uncle, all right. But not not like a, a not like an uncle that I'm close with, okay? So I go over there, and as I was driving there, I said, God, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know why I need to be there. I don't know, you know, anything. You know, and I said, all right, I'll just go over there because my aunt is telling me to go. So I'm going to go because I need to be there. Okay? I'm family. So I should be there. Then when I start going, and I, I, I reached the elevator, and then all of man, because I didn't know at that time what was happening. I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. Knowing who he, his condition, knowing who he was, knowing, you know, there's not really great communication either because he just speaks nothing but at home. And I was like, well, even if I get, you know, we overthink too much, okay? We're trying to calculate and all this stuff. I get there into the room and the doctor says he can't hear you. You're the first family member here. You know, we're just going to tell you that he's not going to make it throughout the night. He's in a coma. He can't hear you. Nothing. So I said then, I was like thinking God, then why did you bring me here? Okay? That's my first thought. I had my thoughts. I had my natural thoughts. And the Lord said, it's not about you. I want you to speak to the spirit man. So I said, okay. So I had to kind of like pull myself up, you know, oh, Jesus, you know, pull myself up and, you know, man, God, you got to give me the words because I don't know what to say at this point because he's all tubes, everything, you know, going in him. And then I said, okay, God. Help me. And I started speaking to him about Jesus Christ, about the blood, about the resurrection, about how he can save our souls and how we must turn over our lives to him. And oh man, I can't really remember much of what I had said, but 24 hours became two weeks. Two weeks became two months. Months became, you know, six months later. Then ended up, you know, we ended up seeing him in, in a rehab. And it was like months, months later. We ended up seeing it in him in a rehab. And he said, that night that you came into my room, I heard every single word you spoke to me that night. And he said, not also that. He said, remember when, when you started saying the sinner's prayer? He said, when you begin to, when, when you when you started saying the sinner's prayer, he's like, I started saying it in my mind. And I believe that Jesus 
was going to heal me. Medicine men saying that. And he ended up getting healed. The Lord expanded, the Lord expanded his life. I don't remember how many years, how many years later. Seven, I believe. Maybe ten. And but that's what he's saying. We demonstrate his power. We demonstrate who he is. We, you know, we don't just, you know, we don't just, you know, go in by chance. It's not chance. There's no things as chance. With God, man, the Holy Spirit is trying to impact your lives to say, oh, it's not for you anymore. It's about showing the demonstration of God's power in other people's lives. Come on. You never know it could be that person's last hope. And you also never know that what if they were praying for somebody to just come and God put it on your heart and you failed to do what God called you to do. A teacher, evangelist, prophet, you don't have to be any of those. Just be used by God to demonstrate his love and affection and power to all the people. And that's how we have to be members of Noah's Ark. They don't have to be. But all we got to know is that in this camp meeting, in this revival, in the women's conferences, in all these things that we put up, that there at least that there was one person that God saved in this camp meeting. Amen. That God thought of. That's the whole reason why it's here. All kinds of stuff happens and, you know, happens in this place. We know that, right? We hear it. We see it. We know it. Let us be able to speak God's word. Let us demonstrate it. Let's go to Philippians. Then a couple more scriptures. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Let me read them quickly. It says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of the things in heaven and the things on earth and the things under the earth, then we imagine, can you imagine that, oh man, it doesn't matter what it is, who it is, what it could be, that all things have to bow at the name of Jesus? He says things in heaven and earth under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Isaiah 55 and verse 11 says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void, but it will, it shall accomplish that when I sent it. Oh, glory to God that the word of God, the word of God that is in me, let it go forth out of my mouth. That when, wherefore I speak it, it is going to accomplish what the word of God says. Amen. We got to get this in our minds, in our hearts. And our spirit. That the only way that it is going to be effective. is going to do it. He's going to perform it. He's going to let it work out. Right? It's going to come to pass. Because it's his word. Amen. And all we got to do is, is, is understand. Get it inside. Not just only in our mind. But get it right here in your heart. And know that when I speak. And I when I declare. When I oh my God. When I begin to pray, when I begin to, you know, begin to do the things that God wants me to do through his word, it's going to accomplish.
People aren't going to see when they pass by. People are probably going to turn away now. All these things, you know, we think in our mind. Service isn't going to go the way that we want to. Oh, man, stupid generator. And you're probably thinking all kinds of stuff. Because <laughs> we're thinking about it. Now we're, you know, now we're thinking about all this stuff instead of getting our mind focused on God. Then when Brother Josh is singing, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're still in the flesh. Still in the flesh, you know, you want to worship, you want to praise, but you're thinking, oh, the lights are probably going to go back out. <laughs> huh? You know, and you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> we have, oh, man, our, our, our mind just so messed up sometimes. But that's what he's saying. If we could use the word of God, if we could just use it, use it, take advantage of it, read it, study it, have it in you, Amen. let it come forth. He Amen. said it will accomplish results. The word of God says it will not return unto me void, meaning that it was with it will show results. It will show results. The word of God in us will show the results of who he is. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let it not just be a habit that you have to make to get into the word. I know some, some of you are probably hard to so read, you know, you got work, you got children, you got family, you got all kinds of excuses, right? Come on. I got to do this outside. I got to do, do this at the church. I got to cook food. I got to clean the house. I got to go to work. I got to, you know, man, all these things and don't even, not even for like. 15 minutes are you able to get into the word? Nothing. I'll get the word when I get to church. I don't know, man. I don't know about you, but you know, the you know the, the Lord showed me something. My, my, my last thing. The Lord showed me something. I, uh, the, you know, few months back and he said he asked me a question one day because I, I've been I, I have my messages have been about the word lately just the word and so he told me he said how do you survive I said I live in a house and he's like, no, how do you survive? And I said, well, I got a job. No. And I said, oh, you mean like body? Like, like live? Like body live? He's like, yes. And he said, how do you survive? And I said, well, I got to eat and I got to drink. And he goes, yeah. And what happens if you don't eat or drink? And I was like, well, I'm going to starve myself to death. And naturally, our body cannot go without water for so many days or else we die, right? So he was like, okay. He said, so, if people were to understand that with my word, they will know that their spirit will also die if they don't get into the word too. Whew. Stop that one. He goes, so what does my word say that I am? I am bread and I'm water. So I'm your food to eat and your water to drink. So you cannot survive without my bread and my water, right? So how is it then 
that a person that is a believer of Jesus Christ is able to survive, not unless they get into the word. Amen. If we do not get into the word, we do not survive. Amen. We are dead in the word. That's right. Come on. I know, you know, I you know, I don't even know how this even came up. But I remember I was talking to to a to a, a, a woman and she was somebody that I admired, right? And she I don't know if it was like conviction or whatever. I don't know. But she told me she she told me one night, she said, I don't even remember when the last time I read the word. 20 years something. <laughs> what? Come on now. And you call yourself a Christian and you haven't even read the word in 20 plus years? How does that work? <laughs> uh. So you're just going to church and filling up a seat? It didn't make sense. Don't be like that. <laughs> come on. Don't just come to Sunday afternoon and Wednesday, right? And Friday? Don't just come those days and think that you got into the Word. It's not your Word. He put in His hours for you to be fed the Word. Just because He put in hours it doesn't involve you. Well, it's all right. Get into the Word. The Word of God says study to show yourself approved. You know what? I get proof. I get proof a lot. Sister Adrian, I know that you're familiar with this. Or maybe you're unfamiliar with this. Could you bring this word out to us? I'm like, yeah. Sure. And I go and I, I don't just, you know, just say, oh. No, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. See, if I want to use the word of God against the enemy, I'm going to use it as an advantage because I know I'm anointed by God to use the word of God to speak against the enemy. And I'll use, you know, the scriptures to come against the enemy because I know he has given me authority through the word. Amen? And I can speak it in such a way that I know by faith that whatever the enemy is trying to do, I can cause it to make him step back because I have an advantage of the word of God in my life. And you know what's so funny is that even the devil knows the word of God. That he spent time in the word to use it against Jesus Christ himself. And if he has time to get into the word, then you have time to get into the word. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. His word is very important. I challenge you. That if in the morning when you get up, late at night even, when you can't go to sleep, open up the Word and I guarantee
guaranteed that this camp meeting will not be the same, like the same old camp meeting. I guarantee there will be growth in you. Because now you're coming in with the word. Like, oh yeah, I got the word today. I don't have to wait for the preacher to preach the word because it's already spoken to me. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I bet your pastor would be so proud of you if you could just get up and declare and speak the word. He'll know that there's growth in you. I, you know, I, I know that that's probably what every pastor hopes is that their congregation is growing. But how do they know that you're growing? By just coming in every and being faithful? No. It's demonstrated. It's demonstrated in your in, in your songs, in your worship, in your praise, in your exhortation, with you bringing in people into the house of God, they'll know that, oh man, look at, the yeah, pastor would be so proud, look at sister and so-and-so and her growth, bringing people in the church. Wouldn't that be so awesome if that Pastor Paul would see that? How much then it would be an encouragement to him to see that, oh man, my people are growing. Wouldn't that, Pastor Paul, that would make your heart so happy, huh? More than anything. More than anything. The preachers, teachers, it would make your heart glad that, oh man, I, I, I bet you Brother Josh would probably feel so encouraged if if one of you guys could get up and lead song service instead of him. Or he can just kick back, kind of, and let you guys, come on, rise up. Rise up. Come on. You've been standing already for too long to to. To make that chair stinky enough. Come on, get up. Get up. Do something. Show that you, man, don't let the enemy show you that you're not worth it. You're valuable to God's kingdom. Come on. Show him. I can do it. I can open up in prayer today. Even if it's just praying. Praying. You know what? You know I go to I you know I preach at camp meetings and revivals, and you know what? Sometimes I wish you know, and just just pray. You don't have to you know, man, bring heaven down. Come on, it's just we encourage him, we encourage him. You know, I I fellowship at you know different camp meetings and revivals. I don't know what's have to be the preacher, but man, sometimes I'm sitting there in the congregation and they call people up. People are coming, and I and I think, oh man, Lord, this isn't my time. That's their time. That's the preacher's time. And the Lord says, no, you can't just sit there. You gotta go over there and pray for them. And I get up. And I go to where the people are and I start praying for them. And you know what I always, you know, the, the minister who's ministering were like, oh man, I'm so glad that you came. Glad that you came. Prayed with me. Man, brings so much unification to the body of Christ where we can work together. You don't have to know what's going on in the individual's life. But you just stand there, man. You don't have to. You don't have to say, "Oh, I need to know your problems. Tell me all about it." You just let the Holy Spirit start speaking in tongues. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Oh, man! And you'll see. You'll see results. You may not even know how to pray for people. I didn't know how to pray for people when I first started, but. Man, you know what? The Lord has inspired me. Come on, get up. Just just be with them. Encourage them. That's what I started doing in the church. I said, okay, 
they're up here. I don't know what I'm doing, but I feel compelled to just stand there with them. And I did, not knowing that God would show me how to start praying with people. Just being there with them. Right? And then that slowly the Lord started teaching me how to pray. Started showing me things. Not scary things. Showing me good things. That's the thing. So a lot of people get scared too, praying for people. Well, I don't know what's in them. Don't worry about what's in them. You got the Holy Spirit. What if a, what if a, a devil starts coming out? Don't worry about it. You have Jesus Christ in you. Don't worry about it. Just pray. Come on. Starts by little things. Little things. Take advantage of the word. Amen. Let's all stand. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't know the word was going to come out like that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you are here with us. We thank you for teaching.